Just ahead on American Black Journal, it is time for Detroit's annual Concert of Colors. I'll talk with the organizers about this year's event, plus the latest on efforts to house the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame right here in Detroit. Don't go away. American Black Journal starts now. American Black Journal is funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television. Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Maryland cabinets, and their brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929. Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. The 26th Annual Concert of Colors gets underway this week in Midtown Detroit. The free event highlights diverse music from all over the world and features a variety of performers, including jazz saxophonist James Carter. Joining me now are Ishmael Ahmed, who founded the Concert of Colors, and Charles Farrell from the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, which is one of the concert partners. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Ishmael, let's start with this. How did you come up with the idea for this well, concert? It didn't pop out of my brain. <laughs> uh, New Detroit, which was founded as part of, you know, the follow-up to the 1967 rebellion. Uh -huh. Uh, began working uh, with all kinds of communities of color in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on their racial justice committee. Mm -hmm. uh, I chaired it. And then they asked me to help them put together a group called the Cultural Exchange Committee, okay. which was mainly the five major communities of color yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, around culture. And I had worked with things like that. I uh -huh. did free concerts for causes and uh, also worked with a group called Rock Against Racism in Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was ready to go and do it. <laughs> and we all worked together. Uh, and uh, now it includes some of the most important arts institutions yes. in the city as well. Right. 
the DIA, uh -huh. the DSO, the Science Museum, the right, of course, historic, yeah. historic, and of course the Charles Wright Museum, who have been there from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about those early years. Uh, the idea of putting together the roster for this every year is really in interesting to me. How do you decide who we should uh, see on those stages? Well, I curate it, so I get that responsibility, yeah. but I also work with the Arab American Museum who have taken over the leadership role, you know, uh, and are the cement for the coalition right. that now exists. Uh, and I'm also a member of their board, sure. so uh, that staff works with me a great deal on this. But also we get ideas from the people who we've worked with all this time. Mm -hmm. So we might ask somebody from the Caribbean community to call up the mighty Sparrow and <laughs> ask him, uh, would he be willing to do this for yeah. a lesser amount of money, right. or <laughs> that kind of thing. So we have get ideas from just about every place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, the rights involvement is, as uh, Ishmael says, uh, really pivotal here. Talk about what's happening this year with uh, the what, with this year the theme for uh, concert of colors is state violence trauma and healing mm -hmm. uh, very uh, captivating uh, theme and uh, very appropriate uh, given uh, certain issues that's taken place in our country mm -hmm. uh, most notably what's taking place at our border mm -hmm. and the continual um, shootings of African Americans and uh, uh, Islamophobia, et cetera. I mean, it's a lot of uh, issues of diverse, uh, divisiveness uh, yeah. within uh, the community. So this is an opportunity to actually bring, to be a model for collaboration and partnership, an example to the nation on how various cultural organizations can work together. Um, at the right, as you indicated, and we're very happy to showcase uh, the great uh, James Carter. Mm -hmm. As our headliner, uh, James Carter being an ambassador for Detroit uh, throughout the world, and of course, uh, he has some very moving pieces that mm -hmm. we'll uh, be uh, presenting, such as Strange Fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've uh, worked very close with the DIA. Uh, the DIA is a very core partner in our stage, which is called the Farnsworth and Brush Stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll feature such artists as uh, Shardy uh, Miles, uh, who is a 12-year-old uh, uh, drummer, uh, phenomenal drummer, plays with adult bands. Uh, we'll have spoken word artists by uh, Phoenix Farrell uh, addressing the issue of state violence, mm -hmm. trauma, and healing. Mm -hmm. um, a very uh, powerful uh, uh, artist, uh, Gwen uh, Lasser, who's uh, Violinists will be joined with Spencer Bearfield and uh, really very strong uh, band. Uh, and also we'll have uh, Ma Mayene, uh, who's uh, a guitarist who's signed by uh, Jay Z. Mm -hmm. So, a really full, uh, powerful lineup. Uh, and this type of music uh, extravaganza is taking place at all the venues. Yeah. Um, I am happy to say that I will be moderating a very important uh, panel on Thursday. Uh, at the Arab American Museum in their annex uh, around that theme of state violence, uh, trauma and healing. The keynote speaker uh, there would be uh, Dr. Mona uh, Atisha, Atisha. Uh, um, who uh, really brought to the fore the whole Flint issue. Yeah. So we're asking everyone to come out to support her new book yeah. um, and to uh, listen to artists. So it's an artist discussion. Yeah. Uh, what is the role of artists? in terms of what's going on in society. In to, uh, sure, portray and then sort of maybe help people sort through all of the things. Huh. That are, Absolutely. Are Go ahead, Ishmael. Just some of the other groups that uh -huh. will be performing throughout mm -hmm. the festival are, uh, we're bringing in the, probably the most popular band in Haiti. Mm -hmm. They've been working with Arcade Fire mm -hmm. uh, in New Orleans as well, and their name is Ram. There's 16 pieces mm -hmm. uh, that and the music ranges from traditional Haitian voodoo music to uh, kind of punk rock guitars. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, we'll also have the Trans Global Underground from England who created uh, electronic world music. Mm. Uh, they've been around for 25 years, haven't been to Detroit for 15 years. Wow. And uh, headlining are two groups. One is Buffy St. Marie, okay. who's about 80 years old, the <laughs> Native American artist, uh, if there ever was one. She's got a brand new album. Mm. And also, uh, of course, the Don Was Review. Right. And our theme will be Detroit Rocks this time. Right. And we'll focus in on rock music out of Detroit. We've got a huge number of great musicians 
uh, involved in that. Yeah, yeah Don was, of course, is uh, always an integral part of uh, right. the Concert of Colors. It's one right. of the cool. Had a Blue Note Records. Yeah. Yeah. Produced the last eight albums by the Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. Willie, I can go on for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> he's an amazing man. Helps to put together the Grammys. Yes. Uh, you know, he's always doing something. Right. But he loves Detroit. But he loves he's Detroit. Really, really he loves invested this, in Detroit. He loves this concert. Yeah. yeah. Uh, talk a little about the importance of this kind of expression of diversity right now, mm -hmm. uh, given the, the, the conversations that we're having nationally about diversity and whether it matters at all. You know, music is, uh, as Paul Robeson um, was an ambassador throughout the world mm -hmm. to understand, not only understanding 20 languages, but what is the language of music if not uh, a human language that can bring diverse groups together. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that to be the case the night we um, uh, looked at the 67 Rebellion, we had uh, Marion Hayden lead a concert to bring everyone together. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's a wonderful way to uh, not only talk about the diversity uh, within the community, but the organizational uh, connections across, uh, as Ishmael uh, talked about, the, the DIA, the, the DSO, the Michigan Science mm -hmm. Center, Detroit mm -hmm. Historical Society. Uh, you know, we have a sculpture, as you know, on our grounds called United We Stand. Yeah. Uh, by Charles McGee representing yeah. seven races in the unity dance. So it kind of echoes that same theme of when uh, the state is, uh, you know, very, for me, a horrific exp uh, expression to see the treatment of children and mm -hmm. detention centers taking place and uh, these other issues. So we want to uh, send a signal uh, out to the broader community. Let's um, work more closely together that we're all human beings. Uh, that music is a great way to heal yeah. and to have the, all the communities come out uh, to all the venues yeah. this year. The number we, of people who come out is really yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's about 30,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think the other thing, though, is that music is a powerful force. It really can change people. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity to cross lines without any real danger mm -hmm. uh, and listen to music, conscious music, uh, is pretty amazing and moving. And I just wanted to say the dates, yeah, if that's okay. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sure, July 11th, we'll start off at the DIA mm -hmm. with a film review mm -hmm. of uh, the Don Was reviews for the last 10 years. Uh, and we will also be starting off at Third Man Records, you know, Jack White's record store. Sure. Uh, they'll be doing something as well. And then we will go right through until uh, uh, till June 15th. 15th yeah. And I want to mention one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. This is so successful that the city of Flint came to us and asked us, can we do the same thing yeah. at the same time? Right. And so they are doing four days with many of the same artists, many of the same themes. And so it's a growing thing. Yeah. And so while we struggle to keep it going, it grows. It grows, it grows. All right. Uh, also, before we end, uh, some news at the museum. Uh, your executive director, Juanita Moore, uh, yeah, is yeah, going to retire. Great, the great uh, Juanita Moore. Got about 10 seconds left, but I want to make sure we yeah. note that and note that there, you guys are having an event for her on July 10th. July 10th at uh, 5 p.m. in our Ford Motor Rotunda. We asked the entire community to come out to yeah. celebrate her uh, stellar and remarkable leadership yeah. uh, to place the Charles Wright Museum on a, a global map. Yeah, she uh, really did amazing work there. Yeah. Yeah. The museum and the community are in great debt to her. Thanks, both of you. For yeah, thank you. Good thank luck you very much, Stephen. Yeah. Up next, a man on a mission to build a Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame right here in Detroit. But first, we continue our look back at this program over the last 50 years. Here's a 1996 Detroit Black Journal interview with trumpeter Wynton Marsalis about the type of music he composes. We deal with the American experience. And uh, we try to incorporate all aspects of that experience that, that we are aware of. Mm -hmm. And which, when you listen to us play, you're listening to us negotiating our different agendas and personalities through a musical form. Now, um, we record a wi wide range of music. Uh, one thing that we really attempt to do, is to do is to break down this conception of generation gaps and the separation of our music into eras, because we feel that mm -hmm. all eras of our music has a power and a beauty to it and that a personal statement can be made in any style of jazz music. 
like Michael White, Dr. Michael White plays New Orleans style clarinet, mm -hmm. but he sounds like himself. Mm -hmm. You know it's him when you hear him play, and he plays with a power and a beauty. And uh, we go from, from uh, what, 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 what we, we go from the ecclesiastic to the tawdry. You know, mm -hmm. we try to deal with all aspects from from the Stanley Croucher he says from the outhouse to the penthouse, and we don't. Uh, we don't discriminate with our experience, you know. Different people, different guys in the mm -hmm. band think different things. Like, mm -hmm. if you listen to Herlin Riley play, he has a certain experience. Right. You listen to uh, Marcus Roberts when he was in the band, or Todd Williams when he was in the band, everybody has a different. Wes Anderson, Warm Daddy, you know, mm -hmm. he plays another mm -hmm. way. So I try to find a music with a, a, a flexible enough framework to allow each of the musicians to express themselves, but uh, also something that will be c cohesive, that will, that will make sense. <laughs> Lamont Robinson's longtime dream is to create a permanent Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame right here in the city of Detroit. Right now, his R&B Museum is a traveling exhibit with a large collection of rare music memorabilia. Nearly 200 artists have been inducted in ceremonies in Detroit, Ohio, and Mississippi, but Robinson is on a mission to house the Hall of Fame in the city with a rich musical history that encompasses R&B, gospel, jazz, and techno. He, he envisions a venue with a museum, a theater, a cafe, a library, and a gift shop. I'd like to welcome Lamont Robinson to American Black Journal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having so, me. So, uh, what a wonderful idea. <laughs> tell, me, tell me how long you've been working on this. <laughs> Since 2010 is when I uh, okay. came up with the concept of yeah. it. Yeah, and, and what inspired you to say, we need a R&B Hall of Fame here in Detroit? Well, I'm actually from Cleveland. Uh-huh. And I visited the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame many times, and mm -hmm. I went there, and I just seen just a little showcase for a rhythm and blues artist. Yeah, it's a little part of it. A little part. Right? <clears throat> and I looked around the country. I see there's one for country mm -hmm. music artists, mm -hmm. but there's not one for rhythm and blues artists. You know, yeah. a lot of people get it, get 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 uh, kind of off by <laughs> Motown right? and Stax right. Museum. Yeah. But those are for their artists. Uh huh. You uh -huh. know, if you're on Motown. Right. Be in there if you don't stack. Right. So we needed a global museum yeah. to induct the Prince, the James Browns, the Jackie Wilsons, the Sammy Davis Juniors. Uh -huh. So I came up with the concept and I've been pretty successful with it. Yeah. And and as I said, you've inducted a lot of folks into this uh, over uh, over yeah. the years. Tell me about those ceremonies. Ceremonies. Uh, the last four have been here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. We started in 213 in Cleveland, and um, had just an overwhelming of. Uh, people come from all over the country. Mm -hmm. uh, this past year, uh, June 3rd, we had it at the Charles Wright Museum uh, sold out. We had people come as far as Europe and Utah, mm -hmm. and uh, works out very well. Yeah, works out very well for yeah. Us. So, so talk about why Detroit. Uh, why you think uh, this important uh, monument to R&B belongs here? This is the music capital of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, no one even, will argue with that in, in Detroit, but maybe outside of Detroit. Even they might. before Motown, that's what inspired <laughs> Barry Gordy to uh, to build Motown. Well, to you know have Motown here. Yeah. Uh, you have every genre of music. You know now you have techno. So this is the music capital of the world. So mm -hmm. why shouldn't the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame Museum be here in Detroit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is this something that you could see working with some of the other? Music museums, we have a lot of them already, as you pointed out, Motown and, uh, and some of the to. others. Uh, is this something that could be part of those? I, I would love to. Uh, we have inducted uh, a lot of Motown artists, uh, about 18. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, we would love to join a partnership with some of the other entities of music. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people come from all over the world to come here just to step on the soil where the 20 grand was at. Right, uh, right. And you still have a lot of variations of different... Uh, monuments of uh, music from the past, like the Fox Theater, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, United Sounds is still standing. So people come here to do documentaries, yeah. Burt's. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot down at Burt's, and he has a showcase of a lot of history. So this is the city. And, you know, a lot of artists from around the country, after our induction ceremony, say, Lamont, Detroit <laughs> is the place. Detroit is where you You know, I talked to a lot of cities, but um, I moved here from Cleveland, uh -huh. met my wife, uh -huh. which is Cheryl Ruffin uh -huh. Robinson, right. the, the daughter right. of David the daughter Ruffin. Daughter of David, right? She's my president, and um, I get a lot of support from the Ruffin family, and and, and a lot of the artists here in Detroit, you mm -hmm. know. So mm -hmm. uh, this will be the home. Yeah. Uh, 
one of the things that I think about a lot, if you think about music history in Detroit, right. is not just the artists, but as you were talking about, sometimes the venues uh, are are super important, and then uh, also the recording studios. Exactly, uh, exactly. The, the, the music that was made here, whether it was by Detroit artists or not, is is super important. Very important. And you know, one of the things is that we're going to touch on the disc jockeys, radio mm -hmm. personalities, mm -hmm. the promoters, uh, the producers, mm -hmm. the unsung heroes. You know, a lot of times, if you don't have a million seller back to back, you get overlooked. You're going to induct it. We have inducted a vast uh, variety of uh, unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mad Lads from Memphis. I don't really know who's the Mad Lad, <laughs> but they were on stacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they deserve to go in. So we measure, uh, you have to have 20 years mm -hmm. to be inducted. And I think Aretha Franklin put in 20 years. And if a group <laughs> that maybe not as known as Aretha Franklin, I think they deserve to go in as well. So yeah. we kind of spread it around. And we're looking to draw, once this is up, anywhere from 250 to 300,000 people a year because wow. we have inducted Prince. Mm -hmm. you know, imagine a museum with <laughs> all inclusive, with all these entertainers. Uh -huh. Uh, and then you got Motown that's doing what they're doing and right. then everything else you have here in the city, right. which makes this place uh, the perfect place. And then you got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame only, what, three hours away? Not that so, far away. So, so I'm looking at the region. When yeah. you come into this region, there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, tell me how you got really interested. Uh, how I got interested, this. really, my background is sports. I played uh -huh. with the Globetrotters. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> uh, play with Metal Lark Lemon. I lived with them for eight years. Is that right? uh, and then I started my own team, the Harlem Clowns. Uh -huh. But my parents, my mother was a great gospel singer and still sings uh, in the city of Cleveland. And my dad was a big jazz buff. But I was a huge James Brown and Temptation fan. Uh, okay. Yeah. And um, <laughs> they used to take me to these things called matinees. I'm uh -huh. telling my age now. <laughs> and uh, we had a place called Leo's Casino. And my uncle was the trumpeter for um, Edwin Starr. Okay. Oh, yeah. And we used to get these programs. And, you know, they would collect, and my grandparents, they would come here to the Fox mm -hmm. to see Nat King Cole. Mm -hmm. And I looked up one day, and I had vested over a million dollars worth of memorabilia that we take as a mobile museum. Wow. And we put it all together, and uh, I said, look, we got to have the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame. We federally trademarked it mm -hmm. uh, in 2014, mm -hmm. and uh, I moved here in 15. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's important, too, because I feel like uh, some of this history is in danger of being lost. It's being uh, erased. Right now, right. Uh, we're getting rid of, race. you think of the controversy over United Sound uh, Systems, the building uh, over there. Uh, if we don't sort of take affirmative steps to preserve this stuff, it's going to go away. It's going to go away. And, you know, we want to get into the Detroit public schools. We want to take our exhibits in as well as once the building is built. It'll be a 30,000 square foot, state-of-the-art, highly interactive museum. Mm -hmm. It just can't be your mom and pop yeah. museum with just things on the wall. We got a business in six statues months. Statues and things, right? Yeah, so we will have some of those and then we'll have uh, a, a place to hold our own induction ceremonies as well as uh, a place for the youth to come. We would like to give each youth from the city of Detroit in the public schools, an ID card to be able to come in. To two be times able to a come, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How cool I, would that I, be? I think is uh, uh, if we can get an instrument in their hand, maybe they won't pick up a firearm. Right, right, and and again, you never know when the next Aretha, Aretha, uh, right around the corner, uh, is is going to emerge. From yeah, yeah, the we city. have to develop that. Yes. We know that that will happen yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah, and 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 connecting with with young people on this issue and making sure they know what the history is here, exactly. I think, makes a big difference. That's hard, too. We want them to know that Beyonce is standing on the shoulders of Aretha Franklin right. or Mary Wilson mm -hmm. or Martha Reeves, mm -hmm. who, who works with me closely. Yeah. Uh, we we want to go back into the history of it. And uh, one good thing about the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame, we inducted over 200 people. We're never going to run out of people. Right. <laughs> right. We're never going to run right. out of people. Right. Right. So, There's always somebody uh, else. We're coming back next year, uh, Sunday, June 9th. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's just good. great, man. It's just great. Yeah. And we, we, we turn it into the weekend, almost like the concerts of colors. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Well, congratulations and Thank good luck. So Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. That's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org. And as always, you can connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll see you next time. As American Black Journal looks ahead at the next 50 years, we want to hear from you, the viewers. Tell us what you think of this program and what you'd like to see on future episodes. Visit AmericanBlackJournal.org to take a quick survey and share your opinion. 
Thank you. American Black Journal is funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television. Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Marillat cabinets, and Bear Brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929.